everyone, I'm Sarah of Ridge Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this stitch that resembles very much like a knit purl stitch, but this is actually a crochet purl slip stitch. So today we're going to learn how to crochet this stitch. Uh, it is a very easy stitch to work in the sense you're only going to be working slip stitches in the front and the back loops only. But if you're not a fan of the slip stitch, then uh, you also might find this stitch a little bit challenging. A couple of tips is just to make sure that you keep your slip stitches nice and loose as you are working. So the resulting fabric of the pearl slip stitch is very dense. Uh, it's solid in nature and it does have this tendency to curl inward. It's one thing to take note of when working it. This is the front side of it which resembles this purl stitch and then this is our back side which uh, is also quite pretty as well. The uh, purl slip stitch does have a little bit of stretch to it I would love to hear how you would use this stitch in a project. I think it would be great for some ribbing and uh, maybe a garment or a hat, um, but there are many other uses for it as well. And you can let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today in the tutorial. I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook as well as a little bit of the Karen Times Pantone yarn by Yarn Inspirations. You can find links to both of these items in the description of this video as well in the description of the video you can find a copy of the free written tutorial for this stitch uh, it also includes some more photos there for you as well so uh, while you're here don't forget to subscribe you can take a look at some of the other stitch tutorials uh, and crochet patterns that are here this channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials Let's grab our hooks and yarn and learn how to crochet this purl slip stitch. One of the great things about this stitch is that it's very versatile in the sense that when you work your foundation chain, you can work as many chain stitches as you would like. So you're going to start by making your slip knot and then make your foundation chain of any number Today I'm going to be chaining 21 for this tutorial. There's 10. And 21. Once you have your foundation chain the desired length, you're going to begin by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook and into each chain all the way across. So count in, this is our first chain, our second chain, slip stitch. Remember to keep them nice and loose and then into each chain all the way down to the end. At the end you can chain one and turn your work. So at the end, chain one and turn your work. You are now going to continue working across and this time we're going to be starting into that first stitch. So don't include your chain stitch here. This is your chain stitch. So into your first stitch, working into the back loop only, you're going to work a slip stitch. So to find your back loop, look at the V's at the top of your stitches and the back loop is the loop that is furthest away from you. So you're going to insert your hook under that loop only and work a slip stitch. Continue that all the way across. At the end of your row two, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row three, you're now going to work under the front loop only. So again, we're looking at the top of our stitches here. We see this nice V. The front loop is the loop that is closest 
to you. So you're going to insert your hook under that stitch only and slip stitch all the way across. At the end of your row three, you're going to chain one and turn your work. As far as the repeat is concerned, that is it. So for the rest of this pattern, you are simply going to repeat your rows two and three for as long as you would like. So your row two is working under that back loop only, slip stitch across, chain one and turn your work. And then for row three, you're going to work under the front loop only and slip stitch across and then chain one and turn your work. As you work this stitch, you will then start to see your purl slip stitch come out. I'm just going to do a couple more stitches here across this row and then show you starting to come out quite nicely there. So that's all there is for working this pattern. Simply repeat rows two and three for as long as you would like. Fasten off and weave in your ends and you will have completed the pearl slip stitch. So thank you so much for joining me and once again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.